have a number of electrons and protons in your nucleus. It's newly charged with atom. Ion is its name. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the likelihood of certain elements being found as uncombined elements by themselves. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next dot point, and actually has two dot points. The first one is account for the use of metals and nonmetals in terms of their physical properties. So what we have to do is we have to talk about certain metals and nonmetals and say why are they being used. And not only that, but actually say why in terms of their properties. Why do these properties allow them to be used in certain ways? And the second top one is plan and perform an investigation to examine some uses of range of common elements. So these are actually quite related. These two dot points are quite similar, which is why I covered them in one video. But before we start, I'll just ask a quick question. Like, have you ever wondered why, for example, all of our cans are aluminum cans? So aluminum cans. Why don't we use metal, like, as in, why don't we use, for example, iron as our cans or copper? Why is it aluminum? Is there a reason for that? Or why do we use hydrogen? And uh, not hydrogen, but helium in our balloons. Because I mean why does what does helium do to make these balloons fly? So how do they, how is that possible? Or why do we all love not all but at least most females, why do most females love gold jewelry? And why do we use gold to make jewelry? So these are some of the questions that I'll hopefully be able to answer in this video. And it's also the physical properties of these different substances that makes it perfect to be used in different combinations of uses. So for example, aluminium is good for cans, but there's a reason why as well. So for example, aluminium. And what I, so what the actual dot point says is account. So account means we should name reasons why they get used in these certain ways. So account for the use of metals and nonmetals in terms of their physical properties. So most of these are physical properties and there's a couple of chemical ones as well. And I will make sure to mention which are the chemical ones because dot point itself says to focus on physical ones. But aluminium has light weight. And weight is obviously a physical one, so I'll put P for physical. High strength also, P for physical. It does not corrode. So it does not corrode means it won't rust and rust is aluminium oxide. And aluminium, aluminium oxide, that, that would be aluminium combining with a different metal or a different element. So this would be not a physical property, but a chemical property, because that would be a reaction of aluminium and oxygen. So does not corrode is a really useful property, but it's actually a chemical property. Also, aluminium has high thermal conductivity. So it means it conducts heat really well. That's a physical property and it has high malleability, which means we can put it into sheets quite well. And it's also a physical property. Now, how do these properties allow us to be able to use them quite well? So for example, cars. Cars have to be lightweight. They have to be lightweight, but still strong. So they have to be lightweight, but still strong. And using aluminum in certain for certain parts makes sense because aluminum is lightweight, but has high strength. So using cars, certain parts of the cars are made of aluminum for that reason. Also, Again, we mentioned cans earlier. Why would you use aluminium? Well, if you have an iron can, that can would actually be really heavy, and you wouldn't want to carry a heavy can around. Whereas if you use aluminium because it's lightweight, but it has high strength, it's actually really easy to carry. So easy to carry because it's lightweight. Also, the high malleability means we can make it into sheets quite well. And we have to obviously make sheets out of those aluminium sheets to make those cans. So that sheet making property is also really useful. Why would you use it for pans, pans as in the heating pans? Well, it has high thermal connectivity, which means it actually conducts heat really well. So for example, if we put it on the stove, it becomes hot really well because of that high thermal connectivity. High thermal connectivity. So here I just mentioned a couple of different properties, physical properties and chemical properties. There was just one chemical property I mentioned. But these physical properties make it really useful to be used as, for example, for cars or cans or pans. And yeah, that's why we use that's why we use aluminium. So this is why for these certain things, aluminium gets used and not iron or different metals. Now next would be helium. So why do we use helium for balloons? So for example, helium has low density. And it actually has lower density than air itself. It has lower density than air. That's important. I'll go for that in a second as well. And it has low boiling point, which means it's actually it's gas. And if we have those two properties, lower density than air 
and its gas. That allows it to actually make balloons fly. So that's why we're using balloons, because it makes it fly. And the reason why is because if something has lower density than anything else, that means it actually rises to the top. So because the air itself has high density, that means the helium balloon will actually float above the air, which is why helium balloons rise. And the fact that it's low boiling point means it's gas, which is good because if it's liquid, if you put a liquid into a balloon, it's not going to rise, whereas the gas will. So both these physical properties allow us to make good balloons. That's why we use it for balloons. Now gold, gold has good electric connectivity. This was a physical property. It's also shiny, so it's lustrous. That's again, shyness is a physical property. And it's non-reactive, so it doesn't react with anything. But again, that's a chemical property. Because remember, reactivity has to do with chemical properties. So, but how does shiny nature and a good electrical conductivity allow us to be used for certain things? Obviously, jewelry itself, we want to have shiny things, and well, jewelry is shiny, so it's useful to use in jewelry. Also, its chemical property of being non-reactive is also useful, because if you imagine, if we use, for example, if you had iron jewelry, what would happen is the air itself would actually eventually rust, rust your jewelry, so that would be pretty bad. But because it's non-reactive, you're not going to have any rusting happening which means the jewelry is going to stay shiny the whole time. And also, it's good to be used in electrical wiring and appliances because that really good electrical connectivity. Gold is actually the best electrical conductor there is, more or less. One of the reasons why it doesn't get used as much as it should is because gold is obviously very expensive. So imagine you make most of your wires out of gold. That'd be very expensive. So we do actually use some appliances to use gold, but most of them don't use gold for wiring, but they use copper instead. So copper is the next one. So copper, its physical properties have is a good electrical conductor, plus it's very ductile. And remember what ductile means? It's also a physical property. That means we can make it into wire as well. So this is here is our copper wire. And also that's also very useful because more copper is a very common wiring. So we use it for wiring, electrical wiring in, in our house and in lots of different places. So most of your wires you'll find are, is made are made of copper. And the reason why they're made of copper, not gold, is just because gold is much more expensive. But it's copper is still a good electrical conductor. Right, so this stop point was all about knowing the physical properties and how we scientists, chemists, manufacturers use those chemical properties and physical properties to be able to make very useful things. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.